and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp, and I'm the executive editor of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining June's installment of the Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance, with Bob Steiner. Today we'll be discussing the Data Governance Roadshow from DGIQ, our Data Governance and Information Quality Conference, and Bob is going to be interviewing some thought leaders from the conference today. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muting the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them by the Q&A section in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or if you like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag RWDG, Real World Data Governance. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now I'd like to introduce our sponsor for today, ASG, Ian, and Ian Rollins is going to give us a quick little talk ASG, and then we'll get the webinar started. Ian, hello and welcome. Hi, Janet. Thanks. And uh, first, I'd like to say actually how flat I am to be in such distinguished company this, this morning. It's, uh, it's actually kind of a privilege for ASG to sponsor this kind of thing. Cheat a bit today, too, and um, share something that we're very excited about. Um, six to me around this... Uh, and a round table this morning is Dan Christians from um, Calibra, and ASG and Calibra took the opportunity of the show to announce a relationship that we've formed to integrate our technologies so that uh, we can combine Calibra's uppercase go governance with ASG's uh, technology that I, I think of as kind of lowercase, very detailed um, functional governance capabilities. Some, some logic behind that that I'd like to talk about a bit in uh, terms of what that reflects about our understanding of what's happening in data governance at, at the moment. Um, so I can proceed to slide to advance, which hopefully is worth Just use those terms, uppercase and, and lowercase governance. And I'd have to say that this was out from a sense I have that the uh, the governance discipline is still really being defined. Um, it's an odd notion. I was making a presentation yesterday here at the event, and, and uh, I kind of threw out the question to the uh, the people I was talking to about how long we really thought data governance had been a discipline, and nobody was really able to make a case for it going back further than about 2000. So, so here we are. With the discipline that's uh, maybe 10, 15 years old at best, and it, it's really not surprising that it's still in, in a lot of ways in the process of being defined. One of the things that really come to the fore in my mind is the notion that uh, you can think of two parts or, or two, two layers to governance. One I, I'm starting to call uppercase governance, which is a framework in which governance roles and actions and rules are, are defined and implemented. By implemented, I mean this is the place where you keep track of issues. This is where you manage your metrics. This is the point of communication, if you like, between IT and, and business and the management. And then there is what I think of as lowercase governance, which is mechanisms by which data is, is organized and processed for the identification and remedial remediation of governance anomalies. So that's like data profiling and data quality and uh, master management and all of, of those things tied together by the enterprise metadata repository. And one of the things that's been absent really in the industry so far is any kind of linkage between that concept of, of uppercase and lowercase governance. Really what ASG and uh, Calibra are, are putting together uh, as we integrate our technologies is exactly that, that linkage between up and lower case governance. So that's thing I think that's going on. I think the governance discipline is still being defined and you know ASG is committed to playing an active part in that and that helping to build um, an ecosystem, if you like. And, and that flows from a sense that no really has a, a one size fits all universal solution to all the piece parts of governance. And so we see multiple players bringing value to the table. And part of what we think our job as the glue is, is to kind of tie together all of those piece parts. 
shadow leaning over my shoulder, which makes me fear that you're not seeing my slide. <laughs> So this is how we've done this, just by the way. So this is the first live session, at least, that I've been involved in. Okay. All right. So what you've missed were my snappy definitions <laughs> of, of up and lowercase governance. And, and, and fear not, because we'll be sharing these slides afterwards. So you don't need to worry that you haven't got them. Uh, the next thing I, I want to kind of touch on is a sense that data governance is changing in scope. And really this is happening as that um, focus on uppercase governance is becoming more prominent. And, and I only think of this as a, as a timeline in a sense. In this, people started doing governance stuff. It really was very much about um, fixing things happening in data. Uh, but it was a fairly low granularity. It, it wasn't really getting into all the extreme detail of, of how data flowed and interacted. And, and it's also very much a technical focus. Now, the interesting thing to me is that two kind of conflicting things are going on. Uh, the shift from a, a technical focus to a business focus or an integrated technical and business focus. But there's also a desire to get a much deeper level of granularity or higher level of granularity, which is kind of um, emphasizing, in a way, the, the technical aspect of the whole thing. And so we see this increasing dichotomy between you know, upper and lower case and an increasing need to somehow bridge that gap. Uh, that's uh, what we see as uh, a very oversimplistic view of how the, the technical challenges, if you like, of governance are changing over a fairly short period of time. Technology point of view, the way that uh, Calibra and SG are seeing this is uh, absolutely need a, an uppercase governance control center because there has to be that communication control center wherewith um, technical people can communicate uh, the issues and status and the value of governance to the business organization and to those that are paying for it. But at the same time, there absolutely needs to be that lowercase, very detailed governance meta support that ties everything together. And frankly, we'll be extending this too as we reach out to incorporate this lowercase governance tools of the, the nature of, of data quality and data profiling and things like that. And, and uh, you can kind of see me here trailing something else which is in the works but isn't quite cooked yet, so I can't quite talk about it. But uh, Let's say I'm very excited about that too. So I've, I've kind of had my, my 10 minutes in the sun, as it were, as a uh, vendor sponsor representative. I want to turn this um, back over to Bob now, and we'll get into the panel discussion when I'll just become um, one of the uh, elected participants. Okay, thank you very much, everybody, for, uh, for attending this session, as always. Um, the session, as Shannon had shared with us, is interviews with thought leaders. We thought we would do this live at the conference rather than the third Thursday of the month. This is the third Wednesday. And we appreciate your dialing in at this time. Um, I'm going to share with you a couple of things before we get started here. And we'll talk a little bit about the upcoming webinars that we have. Um, they're not showing on my screen. Are they able to see them, Shannon? I'm going to, to talk about them. Sorry. Okay. Um, well, just to, just to share with you, the, the upcoming webinars in the next coming couple months are going to be in July. We're going to talk about governing um, governance for master data. In August, we're going to talk about good data governance, the great data governance, which is a presentation I gave at the Enterprise Data World Conference uh, just a few weeks ago here in San Diego. Um, we're going to talk in September about uh, governing customer data, and is there a difference between governing customer data and any other types of data within our organization? In October, managing governance metadata for mass consumption. In November, governing data big and small, uh, governing data big and small, come one, come all. And in December, we're going to talk about data governance expectations. So I hope that you'll, you'll join us for those. 
I, I have this feeling to say things because it's live and again kind of a little bit different from what we've done in the past and everybody's used to hearing live from New York it's Saturday night well this is live from San Diego it's Wednesday morning so again glad to have you with us and with this illustrious panel that we have here uh, here with us so the next thing that I want to do is I want to just kind of walk real quickly through the uh, the uh, agenda I'm having trouble sharing so and it always forgot. Now I'm able to see. I'm sorry. So, right now we're, we're okay. So what I would like to do is just kind of quickly go through the abstract from the uh, for the session. All these difficulties when you try to do things differently. So just bear with us one quick second. So there's there's the abstract for the session. Um, just asking people to, to come and join us and listen to these, these great, this great group of people that I have brought together to talk about primarily about what's next in this great industry of data governance. And so quickly what I would like to do is introduce to you the participants around the table. You just heard Ian Rollins from ASG speak, and uh, instead of reading through his book there, you have it in front of you. We'll tell you that ASG, uh, that Ian is ASG's Vice President of Product Management. Good friend participant often in these webinars, so glad to have him here. The next participant is Stan Christians from Calibra, of who uh, Ian just spoke about. He's the co-founder and operational director at Calibra. Also got my good friend Ann Marie Smith from Alabama Yankee Systems. She's a principal consultant with Alabama Yankee Systems. And one of my good friends, Danette McGillivray from Grand Falls Consulting. Uh, Danette is the president and principal of Grand Falls Consulting. So again, you all for being here with me today. I've got a lot of slides to go through in this presentation, just kind of a list of the topics that we're going to talk about. And it's really interesting. I think you guys are sitting in the order that I proposed that we were going to talk. So <laughs> that always makes things easier for the presenter. Um, first thing that I want to do is I want to start with you, Ian, since we just kind of let off with you last. Um, what, are, what are your impressions of the, the conference so far? What are the value that you see people are getting? You know, you and other people are receiving from this uh, this event of over 400 people, I understand. Yeah, over 400 people, and that's actually a really good starting point, and that's a primary value in itself, the ability to talk to so many people who are dealing with roughly the same issues that we're all dealing with. A lot of different angles, lots of different ways of looking at things, but uh, you know, at least you're talking to people who are interested in the same things. Other thing I'm noticing, and I don't want to be too controversial, but there's a couple of demographic points that I'm, I'm noticing. Um, used to be this was uh, a very IT-focused activity. Um, I think I'm seeing about 50-50 business IT participation here at the moment. Fact, yesterday in, in my session, I, I did a little poll, and it was kind of scary because all the IT people were sitting on the left side of the room and all the business people were sitting on the right hand side of the room and I couldn't decide if that was a, a left brain right brain sort of thing. Uh, thing and this is where I might pull in a, a note of controversy although exactly reflected in the room that I'm, I'm in today is um, vendor balance in data governance and there is a lot of the IT and technically related conferences that, that I go to and I have to say that, that um, Speaking as an old male chauvinist pig, I think that's a terribly healthy thing. It's really good to see that. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing is, if you like a kind of um, maturity shift, uh, we started doing these, these uh, events. A, a lot of people were, a lot of what people were talking about was, was uh, what is data governance and why should we be doing it. Most people seem to be past that now. There's still a lot of discussion about what is data governance, but it's a more uh, in-depth discussion. And the focus is not so much on, on why, but on how. How should we be pulling this off? And I've seen several interesting proposals for frameworks, and, and I think that we will start to see the emergence of a standardized industry framework for data governance. And I think that's really, really cool. That's that's sense. Okay, very good. Well, and so the left brain, right brain, left room, side, right room, you know, this kind of reminds me of like the, the Kate's dances where it's got on one side girls. 
on the other side. Hopefully, we're we're kind of going to be bringing someone together, bringing the, the technical and the business people together quite a bit. I see a lot of that happening at this conference. So I'm going to ask the same question. What are your, your impressions of the conference so far? You know, so what are you learning? What do you see other people learning? What are you sharing with people? Okay, well, Ben, uh, there, a lot of the points Ian is making, I actually agree. With. So the business IT participation, you see that definitely. You see people from the business accompanied with their architects. Now that is a very important trend because IT actually has to learn, in some cases, how they can support the business and their business challenges better. It's a very important point uh, for IT, uh, for the direction of IT, uh, where they have to go and how they have to focus on the business. He you know, mentioned it in his slide deck, the focus of data governance going business-wise, uh, going more granularly. So that I definitely recognize. Second, um, more women. I can only agree. It's something that I've always seen, um, and there's 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 only good things to say about that. The point that uh, Ian was making was the was the maturity. I definitely agree with that. Um, we've been in this space for a, a long time. Uh, data governance is is what we are, is, is what we breathe, and we've been seeing the same trend from white data governance to how we're actually supposed to do it, and we're doing it, we have these problems. So uh, how can we how can we convince management, right? How, how should we focus on, on metrics, for example? So you see people are actually being challenged with, um, with show how, how it works, what's being done. People, actually management expects things to be done. They expect to be able to see results and to be measured. And that's definitely, that's definitely a good thing. The last thing I can say is that the interest uh, in uh, technology, you could say you've got a sort of a trial people process and technology, you can definitely say that the interest in technology is growing. So people, because of the fact that they need to do things, uh, need to show things, that uh, combination people process and technology has definitely established itself. Oh, okay, thanks, Dan. I appreciate your, your answer. Then, uh, then I'm going to hit you with the same exact question. You know, what are you learning from the conference? What are you seeing? What, what changes have you seen even over the years? So, first of all, Bob, thanks for inviting me to participate sure. in this. I really appreciate that. And sharing with such a, a, a great panel of, of uh, colleagues here. So one of the things I'm liking about the conference here is I am seeing a range of people, whereas I agree that uh, we have more maturity in the field itself. One thing I'm really liking is we have people who are here at this conference who have programs that are seven, eight years old, and they're still coming, and they're sharing their knowledge, and they're still coming to learn. There are also people here that this is their very first time coming to the conference. They are just starting, and they are learning. And what pleases me is that we have this combination because as a field, as an industry, as a profession, this whole idea of the data quality and the governance piece, that's how we continue to do continuous improvement. We preach continuous improvement, and I think that we're actually modeling the behavior that we're trying to put forth in our companies, and I'm really uh, liking that kind of interaction and how we can help each other continue to grow. So that's something that's really struck me. Thank you. Okay, all right, good. And, and Marie, we're going to hit you with the same exact question. What are you seeing? What do you see changing? I know you've been involved in a lot of these events. Share with us your, your feedback. Well, I'm going to echo what all my colleagues have said. First, thank you for letting me be part of this. <laughs> God, welcome. this sounds like a repetition. Second, had involved in the first conference where it was very small, very focused on how do we define data governance? Is there a definition we can even apply to this practice? And would anybody care? For now, where we have in excess of 400 people, as Danette just pointed out, the variety from people who have been coming for seven, eight years, people that I just met this morning who didn't know that data governance was even a practice until two months ago. That variety is truly exciting because it shows the growth potential 
of not only the practice, but of all data management. Because we can help people grow not just in data governance and in information quality, but in the other areas. The convergence of master data management as an enabler for data governance and information quality, the need for both data governance and information quality to support things such as data warehousing and business intelligence, and the other aspects of data management that have a part in governance are all here at this conference in one way, shape, or form now, where we couldn't do that at the first conference. And that audience, that variety, as well as the depth, are all things that strike me here and that I hope to see in the future as well. Well, it's not, not surprising to me that there's a lot of consistency uh, between the, the answers that people have given to the, that question about what are they seeing. And it's amazing how the conference has grown. Well, I think to Danette's point, to Ian's point, and Henry's, and to everybody's point, basically, you know, when you see conference like this and you wonder whether or not there's a whole lot to get out of it, I think it kind of answers the question, that for at least state governance, that when you go to these events, you're going you're gonna to meet that wide spectrum of people. You're going to be able to, if you're a beginner and you want to connect to other beginners, they're there. If, you're, if there are new people that you want to talk, or people that you want to talk to that have been established in the programs and what's going to happen next, those people are there. The vendors are here. The the people that are presentations are, are very free with their time. So I encourage you to attend these events. They continue to grow. I would guess that next year's event would be probably a little bit bigger than this one. Mm -hmm. They continue to grow. So just like the, the webinar audiences, have continued to grow. Once you start, you know, putting something out there that people are finding interesting, um, it's great to have all of you participate. All right, I'll move on to the next question, and I'm going to start with Stan. Are you ready for this one? Always, Bob. Okay. <laughs> I want me to hear from you. What are impressions of data governance and the information quality industry in general? Where have they come from? Where are they going? And how are your company being involved in, in that? Whew, that's that's not one question. That's ten questions. Um, and let me let me uh, take a stab at that, uh, Bob. Thanks. Um, so, for us, this conference represents the, the strong connection between data governance and and, and data quality. Right. So, we've always been a data governance company. I've always seen that there are different uh, areas of entry. So you've got people who start metadata. You've got people who start out of MDM. You've got people who start out of data. Quality. Uh, other areas as well, such as BI. Now, what we've identified uh, over the years is that the trend of the combination between data governance and data quality has been constant. It's been high. Right? So people who do data governance often uh, have data quality challenges and the other way around. So the two sort of go hand in hand. Um, and uh, I think that will continue, but it will expand. So MDM and governance will continue to closer together, uh, although I say that the MDM vendors are, let's say, not doing their part in making sure that data governance is clearly defined, uh, rather it, it becomes uh, obfuscated in, in marketing messages uh, oftentimes. Um, we've done around this, is we've always uh, executed on on, uh, on this kind of different entry points. Um, witness of that is our re recent announcement uh, with uh, Trillium. Uh, and a witness of that this very moment on this on this very day is the fact that Ian uh, ASG and uh, and and all from Colibra are here uh, to represent yet another part of the technology world and the and the the, the lens that we see the direction that, that we see going. How will continue? Uh, I don't know. In the same, I think in the same way, uh, in the same way that it's, that it has been going. So I, the dimensions that I explained, uh, and I see slow and steady uh, uh, continuation of this. So don't, uh, this is not a market where you see a big uh, hype cycle and everybody jumping on the bandwagon. This is a slow and steady uh, market, just like data governance or stewardship project, which needs slow and steady progress, and Marie mentioned earlier, continuous improvement. So the way these projects go, uh, try to shortcut it in any way. It's not going to work. Okay. 
Uh, and Danette, I know that you're heavily involved in both the data governance and information quality industries and have involvement with several different types of organizations. What are your impressions of the industry, where it's come from, where it is now, what we can expect, you know, even in the next short uh, short period of time? Well, I might say the, the, I might say the answer to the question on what's next for our question number four. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> uh, but what I am seeing is great interest uh, across all industries. I think this continues to gain visibility, it continues to gain importance, and of course it's going to. And I think that the more people understand that there are fundamental things that happen in not just our businesses, but in our lives. Um, being able to trust election results. You know what is a data quality issue? <laughs> Who gets sure. to count? the vote. How are we going to do it? How are we going to bring them together? How do we train the people who who are sit, uh, watching over the ballot boxes? This, this is all about information life cycle. It's, it's all about governance. It's all about quality. And so what is exciting to me is that the more people, and these are people who know nothing about data. They don't even think about data in their, their lives. When they become aware of information, they become aware of data. They become aware of some of these principles that there are, that information has a life cycle, and there are things that we need to make decisions about, and we need to coordinate on that, and things we need to take care of. Once you learn these things, you cannot see them again. You see them everywhere in your life. I mean, in Las Vegas, I'm not. Walk into a casino. Not that I'm a big gambler. My 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 uh, twenty dollars that I allow myself to gamble goes pretty fast. Yeah, I'm a big spender. You know, watch out for me, right? So, but but I walk in there, and I what I'm seeing is how is how is that money flowing? How's the information about that flowing? How are people making decisions about what's happening on the floor? So I can't not see that anymore. But the beauty is when there are people who are not data people who see that, and they can start to understand that what we bring to the plate actually really, really makes a difference to them. And in, as I said, from elections to, you know, if, if you go on entertainment and you're gambling, to the very, very important things we do from our business, from healthcare, from government, from government, government, <laughs> I should say government, we've got too many of those, government, um, so that is the part that I see really uh, that we we have an opportunity not just for their companies now, but in every aspect of our life to seriously, I think, profoundly affect um, things that are going on in the world around us. And that's very, very exciting to me. And yeah, along the lines of what you were talking about, the impression that I'm getting here, and you're hearing almost every one of the speakers talk about it, is organizations, government organizations, organizations in all sorts of industries are really starting to view data as an asset. And we've been, us in the data management industry for all these years, we've been talking about <coughs> data as an asset for years. And it's just now, I think, that people are starting that senior management and that executives and organizations that are creating CDO uh, positions and things like that are really starting to view data as an asset. And that's, the, that's kind of the thing that I heard you say and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Anne-Marie, and let's hear your impressions of the industries, where they are, where they're going. This isn't new. All around the table, with possibly the exception of Dan, have been in this business for quite some time, because I've been friends with you all for quite some time. There's a lot of room for maturity. We all know that. What I've been seeing as we mature in this field, seeing that businesses are beginning to recognize, finally, that data does have value. But they are also asking for people to assist them in the development of governance activities who are not traditionally associated with anything in data management. People are, a lot of organizations are asking people such as business analysts to perform a lot of activities that we practitioners in data governance and information quality would 
traditionally as our purview. And I see that becoming more of a trend. It's also an opportunity for us in the field to bring these business analysts into our field and teach them the right ways to do things. So not doing things wrong, which means we have to go back and correct them later. It's a big field. That's a big opportunity, I see. Because we have technology that a lot of companies Companies are trying to do things possibly the right way, but with fewer resources. Since a lot of business analysts are on staff, we recognize now the fact that data might be valuable as an asset. As Danette said, they have started to come to the realization that data might be actually useful to them in making decisions. Business analysts into more valuable quantities for commodities for data oriented activities is something that I see as an opportunity for us to get involved with. Okay. Um, Anything else, Sharon? I think we're struggling with the boundaries in certain areas of data management where sometimes people wonder where the opportunity for governance activities stops and information quality starts. I have to work more on teaching people what things are coaching-oriented. Well, bridging the gap. Yeah, that's, right. that's a big thing to say that. Yeah. I want to allude to, uh, Tanette had given a keynote presentation yesterday on, on bridging the gap. Yeah, bridging the gap. And I found right. myself using, uh, I mean, if you're, if you're interested, if you guys out there in listener land are interested in seeing copies of the presentation or those types of things. I think there's ways through Dataversity to get copies of the pre all the presentations from this wonderful event, including the, the wonderful keynote presentation from yesterday. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how to do that, but certainly contact Shannon and, and see if there's ways to be able to do that. All right, Ian, you're up. You're the last one that I'm going to hit with this question is, you know, where have we come from? Where are we going? Or where are we from? Where are we now? And where are we going? You know, a couple of off-topic things first. I, one. Am I the only one who's beginning to get the sense of Bob as the garrison keeler of data governance? <laughs> cultural reference for those of you who uh, who listen to the steam radio a lot. Uh, the same thing is, did Anne-Marie just say a lot of people around this table uh, had been doing this for a long, long time and were therefore old but needed to get some maturity? I, I don't know. I think I, I, I heard that. Um, so, so what, what, are, what are my impressions? of the uh, industries in general and where they're going and all those good things. Uh, let me talk first about what I think of as the industries. I think of the industries as the collective of um, those of us who have technologies, those of us who are day-to-day uh, -day involved in, in actually getting stuff done, and those of us who are involved in framing and trying to identify uh, processes and methods and methodologies. I think we are a collective, and it, it's, it's a good thing if we're aware of that. Uh, as to where this is going, I have excitement and some fear. My, my excitement is about the fact that data governance properly applied enables businesses and, and other enterprises to be much more flexible and agile in the way that they do the things that they do. And by let's, let's work hard at getting people to understand that governance is not about restricting people's ability to do things, mm -hmm. but enabling their ability to be successful with information by putting in place the, the proper boundaries. Mm -hmm. The have is that we are an immature discipline. Uh, we are developing rapidly. We're developing in a context in which all the world is watching, and if we are not careful, we may be over-regulated to death before we have the opportunity to be truly successful in, in making businesses what they could be. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned, as it were, from a, a social aspect of, of what might happen if we are not very concerned and very sensitive about what our activities do to the whole variety of stakeholders that can be affected by that flowing in the casino or out in the theme parks or 
um, as we walk around. We really need to be very sensitive to all of that. Otherwise, maybe our industry has some challenging times ahead. Well, I have a couple off-topic uh, <laughs> statements to say after what you said. First of all, I know the name Garrison Keeler, but I don't know who it is. So you share with people who, and who is Garrison Keeler, and, and how the heck am I like Garrison Keeler? <laughs> how, how can you not be aware of the, the lugubrious poet prophet of Lake Wobegon? Oh, my God. Um, you, we need to take you on one side and work on your um, on your, your grand That's what we'll, we'll, we'll do, do that you later. Go out and, and very quickly after the session, Google who he is. Somebody uh, responded, you know, Bob is Garrison Keeler. That's hilarious. I just did. <laughs> so, you know, somehow it's still about making a connection with me. Another thing that you said that I think is really, really relevant is that people think of governance as being something that's going to get in the way rather than being an enabler. And so governance, you know, government, people view, you know, government as, as being restrictive and all of those types of things. If that's the approach that you take the governance in your organization, that's the way that you send into your organization. That's what people's impressions mm -hmm. are going to be, or, or impressions are going to be. So, but if you take that, you've got to kind of tame that whole idea. That's why you people hear me talk about non-invasive data governance. If we feel like it's invasive, it's going to interfere with what they're doing, then they're not going to want to participate. But if we can convince them that to some degree, this is already taking place, and we've got tools and techniques and things for improving quality, for improving the way that we manage the data. I think that's that's a good direction that the industry will take. So hopefully, people will get over the, the, the fact that it's, they think that governance is like government. Um, what I'm going to go on to the next question here real quickly, and I'm going to start with you, Jeanette, if that's okay. I'm not sure if that was my, my original order or not, but uh, maybe you can share with us some information on there's a lot of people that are not at the conference. There's obviously a lot of people at the conference. But, you know, everybody's out there. What are ways that they can get involved in the industry, things that they can do to expand their boundaries about information quality, about data governance? You know, share with us your impressions on that. Well, of course, with uh, the social media, there's, there's ways to get involved online, reading a blog, being involved in Twitter, et cetera. Reading Garrison Keeler? Or yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, for anyone who knows me, this answer will not surprise them, but I think what we do a lot of about is we have to make the connections between people. So if the way you connect with someone is through Twitter, that's great. If you connect uh, through reading blogs, well, you know, take it a step further and, and write back and get in contact with the person who wrote the blog. I'm all about showing up why I really love the conferences and I really appreciate uh, uh, like data diversity and dev tech and those people who create these venues for interaction. That's what governance does for people in a company. That's what these kinds of uh, companies do for us. They create a, a place where we get to come together. And when people make the connection, that's when things really happen. So I'm about showing up. Just be there. Be, be there, show up. Do the same thing at your companies. Uh, get online. I think you'll you'll get some good references. Buy the books. Keep up. The, there are a lot of new books coming out in our field right now. Uh, John Ladley's got his Enterprise Information Management. He had his Data Governance book last year. Um, my book has been out for a little while that people are still finding useful. Look what's, the best. what's the name of your book, Jeanette? Executing Data Quality Project, <laughs> 10 Steps to Quality Data and Trusted Information. Laura Sebastian Coleman has a new book that out that talks about measuring and monitoring data um, on an ongoing basis. So it go, really goes into some detail about that aspect of data quality that, that people uh, think are important. So there, there's a lot of good information that is coming out there. The more books that we have that supplement the kind of social media conversation that's going on, th those are really good references for people that they can go back to time and again as they're building their program. Okay, and I guess the risk that I took by asking this question is that one person could cover everything. If the first person I asked the question to could cover the whole answer. Uh, Anne-Marie, is there anything that you can add to that? We know data diversity. I'm going to do a quick plug here for TDAN. You should go to TDAN. There's been articles out there for 17 years, every article since day one. Now, some of them may be a little bit back, uh, outdated because things change. People's thought process, I know my thought process has changed dramatically over the years, but there's 
a lot of resources out there. Uh, Anne Marie, I don't know if you were going to talk, talk about TV ads, but I, I figured I had to kind of I had to kind of throw that that plug out there. A lot of information to be had. So Anne Marie. I was going to mention CDN because <laughs> I thought that Bob might have to mention CDN, <laughs> although he happens to be the editor and publisher. Uh, but the Data Administration Newsletter is a great resource, and thanks to Bob for developing that idea 17 years ago. It was the first online journal for practitioners in the field of data management. That's kind of about showing up is so important because really the way to learn is through interaction. And I'm going to make a point of suggesting that people reach out and look for DAMA as an organization that provides excellent educational resources. The annual conference run very ably by friends at Dataversity Wilshire Conferences. Data World is a larger version of this conference. And the local DAMA chapters are a great source of very personalized education by practitioners and most of the people around this table have spoken really at DEMA chapters worldwide. Jeanette said, showing up, meeting people who have done what you're doing, sharing expectations, sharing successes, sharing failures is so important. And reading about what has been successful and reading about challenges is also just as important. If you read something that someone wrote that resonates with you, as Danette said, contact the person. Who knows they have found out since you read what they wrote? You might discover an even broader research than you could ever have imagined. And even and they want to learn further, from you. Oh, yeah, That's the, actually the, the people that you true. contact are very interested in learning from you, but don't only just reach out to them if you agree with something. Oh, it's true. Uh, reach out to them if you disagree with something. I can't tell you how many times that, that has started a dialogue mm -hmm. with myself and somebody else because they didn't agree. One thing I wanted to add to this, and I don't know if we're going to add this to it, it's not just DAMA. DAMA is a fantastic organization. As she said, the ADW conference is uh, the diversity is very heavily involved in that with DEMA. But there's also organizations like IAIDQ, and there's other types True. of organizations, and there's there's blogs and websites and things that you can go to to ca uh, cause some of these conversations to happen. So with that, Ian, I, if I'm not taking your thunder here, but no, actually, I, I wanted to take this a bit in another direction because so far we've sort of talked about expanding your boundaries, and getting involved in the industry of data governance. Uh, but I want to talk about expanding boundaries inside your own organization and getting involved in, in data governance. Um, there's a lot of people get pigeonholed, either in, in their IT functions or, or their business functions, who have a great contribution to make in the, uh, in the business of governance, as it were, as well as the, the governance of business. And, and I think it's incredibly useful useful sometimes just to kind of uh, go talk to somebody inside your own organization that you might not nor normally talk to about the issues and, and maybe try and figure out uh, if there are some internal collaborations and some internal channels that you might build to, to uh, build almost an internal collective to address the issues of way, the ways information and data are affecting what you do. So you know, that's that's kind of making it very personal and applying it to yourself, as well as getting involved in, in the big wide world. And I certainly agree that you should be involved in these industry bodies and you should be reading all the good stuff that um, folks at this table have published, because amongst other things, that's what keeps us fat and happy. So you know, read our books and buy our books and read our blogs and things like that. But need, in the end, to be applying it to your own day activities, otherwise it, it's kind of um, 
conceptual exercise and not practical value. Very good. Very good. Uh, Steve, what do you have to add to, to all, all this great information? Um, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I think one thing maybe there's there's a lot of information out there, and because of the fact that there's a lot of information out there, sometimes it, it gets confusing and overwhelming for people, mm -hmm. especially if you're just getting started. Um, I can count the number of times that I've given an explanation to somebody uh, or an introduction uh, on what we do, and they uh, actually said, well, we're not just getting started or we're not mature enough for this. Um, I think uh, in that sense there's a bit of a because of the, the over um, the overload yeah. of information, some people get scared also because I feel mm -hmm. we're not at the right level of maturity, and then that causes inaction. Uh, so if if anything, I could recommend at this point in time, data governance. We talked about it earlier. Is in a need action, and don't let yourself be scared by the maturity level you have. Actually, get about maturity level. Right? Make press show results, um, and you can, uh, whatever your entry point is, uh, there's a lot of information out there, so, so pick one, pick one, that's yeah. what I would say. Yeah, it's interesting, for, just to build on what you, you said, or maybe this is what Garrison does, I don't, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> but to build on what you said, I mean, the, I am working on a client right now that's talking about the business process improvement, data quality improvement, data governance. Um, Methodology, you know, following an FDLC a little bit closer, you know, those types of things, and they're being hit from all sides as to all these different disciplines. I actually had had one of the individuals that I met with at a client recently call it noise. He's getting all this noise, but it's not a coherent message. You know, the same thing might hold true for the information that's out there about data governance, but it's out there. It's out there for you to find. So all you really need to do is search for it. Um, and with that, we kind of move on to the, the last topic that I have on the list of topics. And since we only have a couple minutes, and I have received a couple questions that I want to address at the end of the session as well. But I want to talk about you know, kind of what's next for the field of governance. And, you know, I, and, 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 I know we talked about that a little bit in the last question, or uh, two questions ago, of basically you know, where, are we, where are we come from, where are we now, where are we going. But the data governance industry, even as uh, Anne Marie alluded to earlier on, uh, you know, just a few years ago, this conference was small. We were finding the industry back then. Now people want how to make this active, make this work for them. And if you take advantage of all those resources we just talked about, you know, that's that's something that you can do. But Anne Marie, I'm going to hit you first with this question: What's next for the data governance? I like being. We got to go. We got to be a little bit quicker. But yes, I like being first. Okay, okay. two minutes. More business involvement. I see more involvement by the business. That's what's next. Okay, maybe elaborate quickly. Oh, quick elaboration. <laughs> uh, the activities in the business are going to drive the maturity of data governance and information quality. As business demands a rapid understanding of their nation needs, the view of data governance and the view of information quality are going to be required to be more mature to provide those results to the business to meet the business goals and the business is going to get more involved in meeting those needs of data quality and data governance. Have you started to be an evolution of that already? That the business to a is getting certain more and more extent, involved? yes, and for certain clients. Okay. Yes, I have. Okay. Very cool. Um, uh, Danette, I know you're chomping at the bit to answer this question. I mean, it's so, a really important question. So. Where do you see the industry go? What's next for the field of data governance? So I'm just going to list a, a few things real quickly. We won't be able to go into depth, but really have this vision for data quality and governance that at some point in time, people would never, it would, right, I'll think of it this way. People would never say, hey, you need an accountant to run my, to part of my company? You mean I need a controller? You mean I need a CAO? Oh, you mean I need somebody to manage my human resources? You mean an HR department? Nobody questions that. They know that that's just part of what is needed to run their organization. My vision is that at some point in time, we are going to be just like that. Of course we need data 
professionals. Of course we need governance. Of course we need quality. Of course we take care of our metadata. But that will, it will never be a question. It's just, of course, we understand that. That's my long-term vision. That it, it just becomes such a part of the fabric. I think in order to get there, there's a couple of things coming up that I think are really important for us that you can consider in your list of things to do out there that are listening that whether this is a priority for you. In order to get people to grasp governance and, and quality, I think we as data professionals need to become more versed ourselves in organizational change management. And if you need to bring people in to help you through that, because uh, everything we do with governance and quality triggers change, and people are resistant to change. So how do we deal with that? So I think the better we are at that, the better it will become part of the fabric of our organizations. But I think we need help in learning how to do that, because that's not part of our data background. I think the other really quickly is getting data, governance, and quality integrated into your SDLCs. Your projects uh, have a big impact on your data. That is one of the big prevention activities that you can do. And uh, there will be some information that Shannon sends out. I have an article along with my co-author, Masha Bikin, that we for Cutter Consortium that talks about data quality and governance in projects. There's another book coming out by Larissa Moss later uh, this year about how to do that in a more agile environment. So I think those are two big things uh, that, that we can do. Oh, I'm sorry, one other thing. Internationally, you know what? All of our colleagues across the world, I've been doing courses and talking to people in, in uh, the Middle East, in Italy most recently, South Africa, Brazil, Australia. Guess what? Their questions, comments, everything is the same. I was joking yesterday that we made it to world peace because Data people are actually the ones across the world who can talk to each other. Boy, you know, if we had that impact on the world, wouldn't that be? It really would be real world data governance. Absolutely. And that you and I have had conversations about SDLCs, building governance into the SDLC. I always talk about things in terms of proactive data governance and reactive data governance. Proactive data governance is building it into what we do. Doesn't mean that you need to redefine your SDLC. No, you probably not have at all. one. You, or you, probably, you probably already have um, other processes in your organization for information security, information quality, you know, your SDLC, those types of things. And again, to try to stay innovative in the approach, the idea is to apply governance to these things rather than defining these things from scratch because it's really unnecessary. So I, I think I'm gonna see, we're going to see more of that happening in organizations. In fact, I even joke to the point that you know, go it into what you do and you don't even think about it in terms of being a data governance activity. You want the data governance game. You should be a data governance game show. I think that would be a great way well, in the future. <laughs> you win the data governance game. If all of a sudden it just becomes second nature to your organization, mm -hmm. people know who to talk to and when to talk to them and when to get them involved in those, those types of things. So stay your next stop. What's next for the field of data governance? Well, the, I agree, of course, with the many of the points that were already made. I'd like to add a few. So uh, with respect to what the net said, this is true. So business as usual, this is the case. Uh, data, there's ever more data, there's ever more complex data, it's ever more needed in in being competitive, building out new products, etc., etc. So uh, organizations uh, who uh, want to succeed in the future and lead uh, will actually have to consider this as business as usual. And we see that in our client base, people are actually taking this uh, perspective, make business as usual. Nobody questions the fact that owners and stewards need to be there. It's just a given. Uh, just like uh, for us as a software company, there's a few business processes that you run. You do product management, uh, you do sales and marketing, you do uh, R&D and support. It's natural. So there's a large organization dealing with uh, data, data products, you do data governance, you do data quality. It's a given. If you don't do it, you will get behind it. Other people will get in front of you. And the next point that we are not there yet, it's very much true. Um, currently, we're uh, being faced with uh, early companies, uh, early adopters, who understand this, understand this vision. Uh, not just by the, the data people themselves who get it, they know what is right, also by their executives who get this same vision and decide to act on that. 
So if they decide to act on that, we as data people, as data stewards, need to be ready. So we need to be ready to roll up our sleeves and, and, and take action and show progress. So uh, the time of, of, of convincing uh, management uh, slides and it's the right thing to do is over. Right? Because they understand that it's the right thing to do, because they understand that their business needs it to be competitive, they understand that something needs to be done, and they want it done. So what we have to do is do it. Um, so I think, uh, two more points that I want to add there uh, in the near future for data governance uh, as a message to the audience. Uh, it's very simple. Roll up your sleeves. And second, uh, governance, it's don't call it you're governing the data. Govern, it's data governance is about people that interact with the data. So it's about making people do the right thing with data. Keep that in mind and just roll up your sleeves. Very good. And I guess we're, we're kind of right where we started from. Right? <laughs> and, and big sensitive to time, let me address this very quickly. Uh, I've got a one-word answer. It's consolidation. Our disciplines are too fragmented at the moment. We talk about many different things. We talk about data governance, data management, data profiling, data quality, master data management, metadata management, and I bet there's a whole lot more that could be thrown in there. Uh, we need to consolidate the discipline. It really, in the end, is all about the same thing. And uh, in the same sense, we need to consolidate the, the number of tools and technologies and techniques. It's too complicated. People shouldn't have to learn half a dozen different tools and technologies to do data governance. Very good. Now, one thing I want to say, and I'm going to get the two questions really quickly. You know, first of all, I want to thank you for sponsoring the webinar. I also wanted to mention a research paper through the university that AST also sponsored that I wrote a friend of mine, Charlie Rowe out on the West Coast, and it's called Navigating the Data Governance Landscape. And it's, I think that's the name of the, the <laughs> camera for me. But it's really focusing on a survey that we did for organizations on how they're getting started with data governance. It's a fascinating, fascinating paper. Um, and all attendees get a free copy. And all of these of the session, of the, well, there, how, there you go. So you're going to be receiving, uh, be receiving a, uh, this research paper about navigating the data governance land, the data governance landscape. So we've got a couple uh, minutes, just very few minutes left, but I want to address some of the questions that we received. One question that we received, and I'm just going to throw it out there to whoever wants to answer. Uh, hopefully you guys will answer, because then I won't have to. Uh, but what kind of books and training do you recommend for business people who want to learn more about data governance and how to communicate it to both senior leaders and people in the field? Do so you want to take a stab at that? This is Anne-Marie. Um, I work with the data governance chapter in the Dame of Zimbabwe. It's written for business professionals at the start. The chapter is definitely a good business overview of data governance. Uh, the, one of the readers to that chapter is our moderator today, Bob, Bob Siner. And from a perspective, I think it does give a good overview for business professionals. There are a couple other books for more in-depth treatment of the data governance. One of them is the Data Governance Imperative by Steve Sarsfield, and another is John Ladley's book on data governance for real practitioners of data governance. I would not recommend that for business people. Oh, an article or a, a book that Sunil Suarez, who spoke at this event as okay. well, I forgot about uh, this. it was called the Information yeah. Governance for the Executives or yeah. something like that. Right. So I forgot about that. You this. take a look out there yeah. if you need uh, information about that book. Look it up under Sunil Suarez. His last name is S O A R E S. But I'm sure there's some good information. Anybody else want to address this question about uh, management and how we get them to understand? I would. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, just once you get you get the books with the information, look in your company. Some of the best success I had is when I had all my data words and it, 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 uh, content, and I went and talked to some marketing folks, and they people who really knew how to put a message together, and they could distill that message for our company and put it into their words, and that was some of the most successful presentations I had is because I got somebody who was expert in that field and put it in their view. And it's been great. Okay. Great idea. Do you want to follow? Um, 
actually, I think I'm with Stan on this. It, it's Nike time. Just do it. The best way to convince senior executives is with results. I've got a uh, couple of things to add. So uh, Sunil's book is called Selling Information Governance to the Business. Yeah, information Governance to the Business. Uh, that was one, that was one of the next questions. What were the names of the last two books? Yeah, so, so that's Information Governance to the Business. In the book you talked about was... Uh, so. SR field, Steve SR field, the data governance imperative. Okay, so hoping that you guys out there got that. Tell you what, after this webinar, let's put together a bibliography that Shannon can send I'll out. I'll send it out to Ali. Okay. Yeah. So that is definitely uh, a good book to help you uh, promote it internally. All the books that I mentioned, uh, all the thought leaders out there, uh, you can find them on Dataversity. There's a lot of a lot of good books out there to tell you how to do it. I sort of disagree with the, with the rest of the panel members at this point in terms of what books you should give to the executives, though. I so didn't say no. to the executives. Read them, okay. But no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree <laughs> anyway and put my own thing forward. So uh, if, you look at, if you look at a, a data company which everybody knows and which has a lot of potential, that's Google. You know, data is their, is their blood. Uh, now, there's a book out there by the chief economist uh, who is at um, Google. Two of them, that's Carl Spiro and ha Hal Varian. Information tools, a strategic guide to the network econ economy. So that's actually a strategic executive level book that shows how um, data as a product or as an asset is fundamentally different from any material product or asset. In the fact, uh, the production of it is more expensive, but the copying and distribution of it is, is is completely different. So, executives, I would recommend that book. Okay. So, I think we've used all of our time here, maybe even an extra minute or two. I, we, we, uh, it's not surprising, given the the group of people we have in the room here, to uh, to discuss subjects. I hope you all got a lot out of it. Um, thank you again for attending the Real World Data Governance webinar, and I hope that you'll attend um, next month's webinar, which will be on the third Thursday of the month. Um, and it's going to be governance for master data. Shannon, anything else? Yeah, I will just reiterate that I will get a collection for everybody on all the reference uh, material and resources, and I will include that in the follow-up email that with the links to the slides and the links to the recording uh, within two business days by the end of day Friday. And also, a big thanks to everyone here. Bob, thank you for another great presentation. And to our panelists. It was very, a very great conversation and, and of course to Ian and to ASG for sponsoring the webinar. Um, and in addition to um, the webinar sponsorship, ASG has sponsored two papers that we'll send out to all the attendees for ending a one white paper called Using Metadata to Simplify the Data Steward's Life. We'll get that out to you. Also written and produced by Dataversity and as well as the data governance research paper that Bob just mentioned. So we'll get that out to every, all the attendees as well. As, and thanks for, for attending again. So hope everyone has a great day, and we will see you next month. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.